Welcome to Wellsprings of Faith. My name is Father Jurgen Leas. I am a Roman Catholic priest, uh, uh, retired but serving as a senior priest uh, at St. Patrick's Church in Stoneham, which is in the next community over from Melrose. Uh, uh, this program is, is being aired uh, on Melrose Mass TV. And actually, we've been here, Wellsprings of Faith, uh, gosh, for uh, almost uh, 25 years. Uh, offering up uh, this show which looks at religious faith, the journey of faith in a person's life, and also the fruit of that faith in uh, their life's work for the Lord. Uh, today we actually welcome back uh, a, a guest who was here a number of years ago, Teresa Larkin. She's still uh, mm -hmm. doing the same ministry she did then. She was a director of A Woman's Concern. It's now called Your Options Medical, and we'll talk about why they changed the name and, and what that means exactly. Uh, it's a ministry to help women with unplanned pregnancies and with the goal of helping them choose life and preserve the life of their unborn child as well as to carry on their own life in a positive way. So thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's great to be back. It is. It is good to yeah. be back. You know, and as I said, I want to invite you because, you know, these, at least the political climate we're in, post Roe v. Wade days, uh, uh, there's a lot of fierce hostility to, uh, to your work. So I wanted to come and help you share the, the goodness of what you do and, and, and know you have people supporting you out there. But in the meantime, or before that, let's, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the show is about religious faith and your journey of faith. Talk a little bit about your own faith journey as far back uh, as you can remember. Okay. Well, I was raised in a Christian home, so I do have the blessing of being raised by parents and larger family who knew the Lord and loved the Lord, and faith was a big part uh -huh. of my life. And um, as I grew older and matured in my life in general, my faith continued to just mature and, yeah. and grow. What kind of, uh, where did you grow up? I grew up in Dorchester. Oh, Dorchester, so you're a local girl. I'm local, yeah, yes, oldest yeah. of nine children. Ah. So a very pro-life family. Right. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, yeah. Well, I grew up in Charlestown, the other, okay. the other yeah. side of Boston, the yeah. proper, so. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so, uh, and, and, and so you never had sort of a, major crisis of faith where you left the faith and came back or N no not really you had I think to own like your own I faith. had to own my own faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes absolutely yeah, yeah as, as my son always said to me he remembers I said to him God has no grandchildren right that's right so that's you right. have to really right. become a child you of God do, on your you, own right and you have to let your faith grow and mature and mature and be sanctified right, and putting right. it into practice so right, yes it's right. a journey that doesn't have a big aha moment, no. but a steady walk with the Lord with that the grew Lord. and matured as I did. And how did you uh, uh, come into what's now become? I mean, I think the first time I interviewed it was sort of a mm -hmm. early, a new, a new thing you were doing. Yes. Uh, now it's become almost a life's work uh, and, yeah. and, and doing this ministry uh, of a woman's concern. How did you get into the ministry of helping uh, women? Well. Um, I always say I, the seeds of being pro-life were planted in my life early. I remember very clearly when Roe v. Wade was passed and my mother um, saying to me and a few of the older, my older siblings, yeah. told us what happened. You know, there was this terrible law that has just happened, that was passed. And, you know, in my understanding, I was probably 14 uh, or so, yeah. but, but, and, um, just hearing about that and, and just, but I always tell people, make sure you tell children about this and what they should do. And my mother saying, you know, if any of you were to ever get pregnant and please come to us and help us, we will help you. Yeah. We do, we would not want you to do this. And so that was planted in right me. There at Even if yeah, I yeah, was young, young girl, I knew yeah. what to do yeah. and I knew about abortion, I knew that it was wrong. Yeah. Um, and so I always, had that. Ah. No matter what I fa faced, it was something that was very clearly taught. Ah. Um, I remember even going with a few of my aunts to prayer walks, um, pro about pro-life walks, walks oh, wonderful, and things. Yeah. So um, it was foundational. Yes. And then, of course, you know, I had got I got married and had children, and things, you know, took a very 
uh, family-oriented path for a while. And as I, my kids were getting a little older, I thought, well, Lord, where would you have me spend my time? I can tithe some time. What would you have me do? And I had heard about a woman's concern. Mm. And so my thought was, well, I can go and fold baby clothes. <laughs> and that's all I wanted to do <laughs> was go and fold baby yeah. clothes. And um, that was t 1999. And I'm still there. Still there. <laughs> still there. Wow. Wow. So, so yeah. yes, it did become a life Life's work. work. Right, right. But I didn't, of course, not know that back then. It's interesting you mentioned, you know, the, the, the distinctly remembering, you know, at 14 year ago when Roe v. Wade happened. Mm -hmm. I actually was ordained a priest the day Roe v. Wade was mm, passed. Wow. Um, and I was sort of more a liberal Protestant in those days. Little did I know how much that would be part of my life, too, yes. because it was uh, early on that I began to rethink um, uh, the abortion issue, mostly through women who came to me who had had mm. abortions. Mm. And I was very inv in involved in healing ministry and praying with women who gone this and and it was really there th that experience that convinced me profoundly that you know they know the truth that, 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 that this really was a baby this was mm. their child uh, and and only the gospel can also speak into that kind of profound guilt uh, because of, of forgiveness mm -hmm. and resurrection I mean it's not just that you're forgiven for doing this yeah. but the hope that your child is, in fact, you know, uh, alive. Uh, so, and so that became, and I started in the Episcopal, I was an Episcopal priest, which is a, a pretty liberal denomination, and we were a rather lonely pro-life voice in the mm. Episcopal Church. Uh, I'm, I'm, I feel a little more at home now being a Catholic, yeah, as you, you can imagine, but nonetheless, so that was a big factor in that, so, yeah. so like you. Uh, mm. And, uh, and, and, and the work you've done always struck me early on as the, the pro-life movement obviously is not just protesting abortion, although we must, we stand up, this is a great evil, mm -hmm. but, but we need to help the women <laughs> and, uh, and save the babies, uh, uh, and, that, and that's your work, which you've been doing so wonderfully. Right, right, it takes everything working together, it takes education, and politics and protest and prayer, but it also takes that hands and feet frontline work of meeting the woman right where they're at, at that moment That's right. of decision. That's right. And to be able to educate them, encourage them, but offer them solutions, offer them help. That's and right. Support. Yeah, the irony is, I've, I've said this many times in homilies, you know, the irony is that most women who've had abortions will tell you well, they had an abortion because they felt they had no choice, right. which, is, which is the great irony exactly. of the pro-choice movement. Why are women having abortions saying they didn't have any choice? Exactly. You know, exactly. This is, uh, to, to right. You know, to yeah. say, I have no choice but abortion, how yeah. is that how choice? How is that choice, yeah. Right. And so you really are, I think, much more than uh, any abortion place uh, the, the, the where pro-choice yes actually happens i know and you and you can't say that because it's been corrupted i know by the other yeah, side yeah, yeah. but you're right because yeah. as we also know in our faith god gives us a choice that's right that's right and so for but for a woman to have no choice to feel but but yeah 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 it's not it's not right and that's i and choice. i know the ministry you do is to you know like like we say folding clothes why are you folding clothes because you're actually one of the women with economic trouble feel I can't afford to have a baby. Mm -hmm. Well, we promise you we will journey right. with you and provide everything you need mm -hmm. to, um, to raise this child and, right. and, and really faithfully follow through on that. that, that, that so many of the pro-life uh, places like yours that do that. Right. Again, women don't know that. You know. Right. Uh, and then... Uh, and then the other thing I learned is, is, is as a priest, was uh, again the issue of choice. Most women said if the the father of this child mm -hmm. wanted it and would stand by me, I would not mm -hmm. have abortion again. Yeah. There is you know, strange dimensions of right. the thing like this. Yeah. So I always blame the man. Mm. Most women would not. 
behind the bush. And well, you know, it men. used to be more that way. Yeah. I will be honest it's because I've now I've had over 20 yeah. years to see. Yeah. And one of the other kind of ironies is that men are often blamed. Women do use that as an excuse. Yeah. The man doesn't want the baby. But men, if a woman wants to keep the child and raise her, he pays child support. He has to agree to an adoption. But he has no say if the woman wants an abortion. Uh -huh. And we're seeing that a little more bit and more, more and more. Well, that really? women are just like, I don't want this. A father might say, I will. I do want you to have the child. I don't want you to have an abortion. And yet he has no say. Really? Uh -huh. So I talk about it a lot when they say, oh, it's not a man's issue. Of course it is. Because that child yeah, is just as much the father's, father's child right, right. as it is the mother's. As, as with the <coughs> exception of, of course, it's, you know, the mother carries a child. But that child has all, half the DNA, half everything from the father. So men are in, a, in some ways, a difficult position. Difficult, yeah. They can't do anything about it if she wants to have an abortion. And yet sometimes they are the ones that cause a woman to have why, an abortion. Why do you think, um, you said, you know, it used to be more what I said was more yeah, true more in the true. past. And, and that's less true now. And that's but it's mm -hmm. still somewhat true, but not less true. Why do you think that shift has changed? Well, I think women feel, have been told over and over and over through these years, it's your body, it's your choice, you get to do what you want, you don't have to think and listen to anybody else. And so there's this mindset that they don't even necessarily think about it in terms of anybody else's input. Uh. It's a very subtle change that I've witnessed. Uh, interesting, it's this interesting. much more, because think about it, how yeah. many years have they been told? Yeah, yeah, your body, yeah, it's your yeah, choice, yeah, yeah, your yeah. body, your choice. You get to do what you want. Yeah, yeah. And they, they, they buy this. Yeah. And it doesn't matter as much yeah. as with other people, because in some ways, you know, it's this whole movement, you know, women's empowerment. That's right. You can do this. And so we do see that it's less about feeling pressured by anyone as opposed to more just, I want to get on with my life. Yeah. I don't want this baby, and therefore, I don't want to have it. The autonomous self. The autonomous self, absolutely. And, and, uh, which is, of course, in many ways, the religion of our culture. Exactly. Um, yeah. and, and that includes I'm autonomous to the, uh, this child. Is, uh, yes. Get rid of it. Mm -hmm. It's not. Mm -hmm. get, it's yeah. not yeah. yeah, it's and interfering it's, with my yeah. life. Yeah, the way yeah, that I yeah, want it, yeah. which is, again, why the ultrasound is so important, because they can talk about it in such an easy way until they see. That's right. I mean, I do remember uh, one of the uh, works that, and I think it was introduced by a woman's concern, at least around here, mm -hmm. was not just to talk to women, but to, I remember we were, because I started a women's current group in Beverly, and the project was to get the money to get the ultrasound. That was a significant part of yep. uh, ministering to women, to show them what, in fact, is mm -hmm. inside their body. And as, as you said, once they see that. Yeah. Um, yeah, which is really, I know you alluded earlier to why we changed our name, was. Uh, yeah, what, what changed, when did that well, happen? Well, it was and starting to, as that sort of yeah. genesis thought of, well, women don't seem quite as worried about having enough stuff, having support, turning the father around. It be, if we saw that yeah. and that becoming medical, like calling it, we were always, we were medical. Yeah. This, your option, this, your choice, yeah. you, you get to make <laughs> the choice. And the fact that it was medical with an ultrasound gave it a credibility, for lack of a yeah. better word, to, today, to this generation where they, they like to be in control, yeah, yeah. everything's visual. And so highlighting that medical made it more likely yeah. for them to come to find our services. And the ultrasound really is the most important thing mm. because it's very easy to say, I don't want a baby right now and for, you know, for whatever. And then that little baby with the beating heart causes them to rethink. What, what's it been actually literally in the office for that dynamic? There are a lot of women curious. They do want to see it. Does some say, no, I don't want to see it? Most want to see. Well, they do. And, I, and that, frankly, it's stunning that most women and, and fathers, we yeah. do see a lot of fathers come in too, yeah. have no concept of fetal development. Oh. And so it's an eye-opener 
Wow. So it's like, you kind of wonder, like, why are they not telling and teaching fetal development? Yeah. Because they're stunned. And they don't, rec- they don't realize that there is a heartbeat at six, you know, six 21 days after conception. Right, right. And it's, that's the biggest fact thing is the, heart, the heartbeat. The heartbeat. Because, you know, I've, we've all kind of believed heart, when a heart's beating, that's life. When right. a heart stops beating, that's life ends. Right. So it's really fascinating uh-huh. that even those women who seem least, phased by maybe having an, oh yeah, I have to have an abortion, it's not a good time, to see, it's like, whoa, oh, yeah. uh, now we're not talking about nothing or something, yeah. it, it's, it's a baby. Yeah, it is remarkable, they just don't even know the most basic exactly. science. Yeah, right. basic science. I'll, I'll never forget, when I was a, a young priest, one of the most moving things uh, was Bernard Nathanson, who yes. had a developed a famous silent scream, and he was like he started NARAL. Mm-hmm. He was like uh, the largest abortionist in the country, right. in New York City. I mean, how many, you know, yeah. I don't know how many thousand? I, I forget the number, but thousands, thousands of, of abortions he yes. did, and and then mm-hmm. he, he had a conversion, conversion. <laughs> yeah. uh, which was initially just a conversion around the question, but eventually also led mm-hmm. to conversion to Christianity and, right. to, and to Catholicism, but, but, but it was the fetal monitor, seeing the baby crying, yes. screaming. Yeah, the silent the scream. Yeah, right. that's why it's right. called, wow. Yeah, and that's, what it, and that's really yeah. what it is, why the ultrasound is so much more important yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. It always was, right. but it's more important, I think, in this visual society yeah, yeah. and instant seeing things to make them real, yeah. that it's, it's really is what changes the mind. You know, and, 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 and part of the kind of, you know, particularly mu- mu- much of the, the, the more uh, in, uh, pro-abortion groups have always talk about science. And, right. You know, right. science matters. Yes, exactly. Well, not in this case, you know. I know. No, no, right. it's like a, a such, th- no. And, uh, now, you, at this point, um, you know, we're, we're taping the show a few months after the demise of Roe v. Wade. The, mm-hmm. uh, the abortion crowds are furious and hostile and angry. Uh, they're, 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 you know, um, vandalizing Catholic churches, and, and I know they're vandalizing. Mm-hmm. I don't know if your particular center has yes. been vandalized. Yes. Mm-hmm. You've been vandalized, yes. too. Yes. So it's, you know, the, this hatred that's been unleashed. And so talk a, I know, mm-hmm. talk a little bit about that experience yeah. at this point yeah. in your work. You know, the, the, it, the challenging thing, of course, is um, Massachusetts, nothing changed. You know, we are one of the most pro-abortion states in the country. Right. Everything, and actually our region, New England, New York, they're all staunchly, you know, yeah. uh, nothing really yeah. changed with nothing Roe v. Changed. Wade. Abortion not threatened. It was not Realistically, threatened. Realistically, yeah. And so it was a little unexpected that we would see the backlash that we have in Massachusetts <coughs> based on the, the laws not changing and actually being codified. You know, that was the first thing they yeah, did was, yeah, no, right. abortions will always be legal here in Massachusetts. And you even, they've even gone further. Yes, right. Further. Further. Than, than that. Right. So it was pretty unexpected. Um, and, and it's hard to know why. Yeah. I, I don't, we don't know why. But we, one of our centers was ta- targeted with the Jane's Revenge. If abortions aren't safe, neither are you. Very disconcerting yep. to come to work and see that on your walls. Um, protests, we had a few other things spray painted on, on the building and, and phone calls, angry uh, things left on our doorsteps. And it was very, it was a matter of probably two weeks and then it, then it kind of died out. But then the press got involved and our local politicians, um, Attorney General, put out a consumer yeah, they're trying advisory, to close your trying to close our places, yeah. and all accusing of all kinds of yeah. crazy, ridiculous statements, with no factual. There has been, you know, n- no evidence to support any of these. What are the things they're saying? That oh, they there's really not n- nurses aren't real. You might walk into a center and you might see someone wearing a white coat, but they just oh, yeah. they might just put on a white coat. They, they're really not a nurse. Or um, they delay your appointment over and over so that it's too late to get an abortion. I mean, just crazy, crazy yeah, yeah. things. Um, and it's like, 
No, our, our aim is to get women in as soon as possible. Our nurses are, are actually nurses. Uh, we actually have a clinic license. So there's a lot of just misinformation yeah. Yeah. that's being perpetrated um, out there with the idea of trying to get women to, to not have, like you said, not have a choice. I know, it's remarkable. It, it's crazy. How does the pro-choice movement want to shut you all down? Exactly. Because that's precisely who are the options, options. medical. Exactly. It, 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 it's, it, it's again, it's just disingenuous, it's hypocritical, and it shows that the real truth is this, 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 this. Well, I have my own theories about what happens right. when you, when right. you deceive yourself. Right. But because, because, you know, we believe as Christians and certainly Catholic Christians, deep down inside, the truth is in there. Absolutely. You know, yeah. and to, uh, the truth of God is planted in the heart, right. Right. and if you push it down, then it creates this this this, this hatred for the truth. Absolutely, huh. absolutely, Outside. yeah, it does. And yeah. and what we're yeah. seeing is, you know, you can't hide anymore by calling yourself pro-choice. That's what I've said in some of yeah, these yeah. Um, interviews I've done. It's it's pro-abortion. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a pro-abortion agenda. It's because if you were pro-choice you would support That's organizations right. like ours that give women yeah. a choice. But, no, they, but they don't. They, they'd be sending you people. That's right. Yeah. So they're, they're not, not hey, pro-choice. Uh, yeah, no. They're pro-abortion. Right. They believe that abortion, for whatever reason, yeah, I'm yeah. sure we both can agree on certain things, it's evil, it's demonic. You know, there's an, there's an attempt to snuff out life, cause women to, to make these poor decisions. As you said, you've been involved in healing women that have had abortions, the impact on women having an abortion is often devastating, yeah. spiritually, emotionally, uh, mental health-wise. So, you know, you, you do have to ask yourself why they're pushing this so, so strongly. But they are. You know, they're trying so hard to make abortion a normal, natural procedure that everyone should have with no consequences, no regrets, and that there should be nothing wrong with it. And when you try to ask um, someone who doesn't agree with us, why would you be opposed to someone having an ultrasound or option? They can't answer yeah. because there is no answer, yeah. right? Yeah. We know there is yeah. no answer. There is no justification for it. So they just stand on this ideology that they've told themselves and created almost like robots, you know, and like, no, yeah. this is yeah, the yeah, truth. Yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah. and we know we can tear that truth down because it's not truth. I know so easily I know. And, uh, and and there's so many levels of it I mean uh, you know um, you know the, the, the same you know you see uh, I walk around Melrose where I live here and you see these black lives matter signs all the way again then you have the list oh, of, yeah, the list. of I love you know, love is love yeah, science is yeah, real yeah really. life is real <laughs> and uh, all these various yes. you know it's Orwellian it is it is Orwellian yeah it's yeah. like uh, and particularly something like Black Lives Matter and, and, and abortion. I mean, how does the Black Lives Matter not perceive abortion as genocidal? I mean, exactly. the statistics are overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's a slaughter going on of unborn black babies in this country. Absolutely. Uh, it's genocidal. And yet, by and large, uh, you know, the civil right, the black leadership is right. gung ho, right. Black Lives Matter, right. except if they're except unborn. Except they're, they're unborn, I know. And it's just such hypocrisy. So, so uh, you know, part of the challenge always is uh, throughout history is, you know, mm -hmm. you one speaks the truth. That's right. And yeah. uh, you may die for it, mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but that's your yeah. job. You mentioned that you were interviewed by the Globe before, and it was a rather difficult interview. Uh, I don't know if you want to talk about that, mm -hmm. but I mean, just you, you, that's being on the front line, <laughs> yes. being interviewed by the Globe. I know. <laughs> well, I had been interviewed by a few, um, what I, we would call hostile. Um, clearly, they weren't on, your, on, on our, uh, yeah, on our right. side. But it was interesting because, as you said, you know, part of the faith, to me, as I was preparing for these, my biggest prayer was, Lord, help me to speak some truth that even a hard heart or, a, or someone mm -hmm. else may see a glimpse of truth in yeah. love. 
and help me to be loving and gentle yeah. and kind and to speak to the, those that I know hate me, yeah. hate what I do and cannot support it. And I have to be honest and say two of the interviews that were, again, one was with NPR and someone that I, I, could, I could tell that there was at least a willingness to hear. To listen. Yeah. There was, yeah, you know, yeah, not yeah. that they were going to be changed, but yeah. there was a respect there. And, well, I guess I could see that, or I, I yeah, guess I can yeah. understand that. But with the Boston Globe, it was just, um, you know, really, I said, <laughs> you talk about faith, it's like, you really living out those scriptures is to love your enemy, <laughs> be good to those that and blessed use are you. you, and bless, right? <laughs> blessed so it are was you. really Leap for an joy, example Jesus of, yes, <laughs> right, some of those scriptures we don't think we're ever going to have to really put into practice, right? Some of the things we're like, oh, I, I can do that, yeah. you know? But some we're like, oh, I don't know if I can really do that. Uh, but we really felt we were in that position. Yeah, yeah. And you could feel the hostility, the mocking, the, the, the literal hatred. Yeah. Um, from the, 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 the reporter. And, you know, again, you just pray, and Lord, just maybe something, maybe something. Yeah. Um, but that's the, you know, there's a, there's a side out there, as you, you know, that really does hate mm. God, right. hate Get good. Get behind it, yeah. yeah you know, that yeah, hates yeah. good, hates people trying to do good things. And you always wonder, like, where, where are they hurting? What, what right. causes this intense anger? You know, because to be that angry about an unborn baby, what, what, could, hap what could be happening in your life or have happened to cause you yeah, to have true. that yeah. kind of yeah. hatred for, for God, for life, for an innocent unborn baby? And so you, you have to keep that, that compassion in you because you just wonder and think how bad, how hard-hearted, yeah, something, they, something you yeah, know, what yeah, could have happened yeah, yeah. to cause someone to come to yeah, this yeah. reality in their life. Well, again, it's like, I, 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 I think of St. Paul and his conversion. Now, there's a man of hate. Absolutely. And the hatred, the, 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 mm -hmm. the, the exactly. fury. Um, and I said, now, again, where did that come from? But, 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 but I always am reminded of the story of the Saul's first appearance in the, God, in the Acts of the Apostles is at the stoning of Stephen. Mm. And it was probably his witness, because I don't know who else might have done that Stephen says, basically, yes. Father, don't hold this sin against them. Right. That must have been terrifying. I, I think love and truth are terrifying That's to people right. when they face it. And, and initially, it sometimes makes you hate all the more. Right. It, it, like the way Jesus was so hated. Hated, exactly. Hated. That's right. You know. yeah. and, uh, but then hopefully it also leads finally to the hate burns you out and you finally Amen. collapse before Amen. we pray before the... And of course there are many, it is wonderful how there are many people, some of the greatest leaders in the pro-life movement are people who come out of... That's right. You know, uh, that's right. Uh, and that's what you, and that's yeah. why we continue to do is we can't hate them. No. We can't treat them with contempt no, or with that. anger we do or not yell. Return we evil we for evil. cannot no, because no, no. then there's like we are to be salt yeah. and light. That's we are right. to woo. Yeah. You know, you try to woo them with the love of right, Christ right. and the lightness right. instead of it. And because we don't, we know that God's heart is for all to come to know Him. But it's hard. You want it to is. strangle them. You it is when you're, when you're <laughs> you can't believe. You know, don't you know what you're doing? You're killing human beings, like yeah. carting them off to mm. Auschwitz, uh, these are portuaries. Yeah. That don't yeah. I know. Well, look I at know. blessings on your work. Carry on. The Lord is with you. <laughs> and uh, uh, obviously, it's also for us a little bit of a day of rejoicing that Roe v. Wade, at least in a way, we have, uh, we have more work to do, right. but also we have more, uh, a little bit of a better of a playing field to play, to, to fight the political battle on. And right. But it's going to take a lot of work. It's right. And Enormous again, amount of convincing. It, it is, but I think yeah. like we all agree that that was a sentence, a death sentence over the country yeah, yeah. that has been lifted. Lifted, yeah. And so even in the spirit
spiritual sense, there's a lifting of there our spirits, lifting, yeah, knowing right, that right. Um, this is no longer the law right, of the right. land that we're living under. So blessings on your work. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this conversation. Uh, uh, obviously, if you know anyone who needs some help uh, to save a baby, needs some real companionship and love and attention and help uh, 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 your options medical um, uh, and we'll post that website and the, and, and the way to get to that uh, on, the, on the ledger here in the program today. Um, thank you, Teresa. You're welcome. And, and thank God you. bless you. Thank you. That was wonderful. Oh, good. That thank was a you. good, rich conversation. Yeah. <laughs> thank yeah. you.